What's up guys, Specstar here today with my semi-final battle for UNL. So, looking at his team, there's a few things I'm surprised pleasantly not to see. Namely, Tranitar. That means Latios is going to potentially be quite nice. <laughs> I'm just going to drop this on him and then tell him <laughs> what happened because he challenged me to anything goes. And I didn't accept, of course, because Zero Aura isn't allowed. So, it's nice to not see... It's nice to not see that tar, and also it is pretty good to not see the noon. That's a big threat. So, we see webs, which is interesting, and also potentially annoying. I think it's a pretty good lead for Zero Aura, as a Chihuahua is growling. So I'm he goes Swamper, and I'm gonna go right into my Latios, which has a really good matchup against him. I have a team builder video which should be up uh, not long before this, and. Actually, I made two changes to the team worth noting that are different than the team builder. I just did a little late-minute tink last-minute tinkering, and I added Grass Knot over Toxic on Latios, and I switched Greninja from Life Orb to Sash, so those could be potentially relevant. I might as well just get Latios open here on the Kelk. I'm just going to defog his rock away, keeping hazards off the field is going to be pretty important for me in this game. I definitely don't want to give him a free switch into Raquinid, but I'm just going to play around here a little bit and see what he likes to do. He goes for Avalanche there and he does zero. Here I'm going to go for Grass Knot and see if he wants to leave that in again. He does not, he goes into a Raquinid. So unfortunately I do show off my Grass Knot. It's going to be crucial for me to keep Greninja's Sash intact. That damage, um, what's the power? 80, so that's got to be AV, right? Well, probably that or specially defensive, actually. You definitely want to have web, so it'd probably be specially defensive, but I'm just going to make sure. Yeah, he's probably just a bulky HP, something like that. Probably gonna go for his webs here. I think I almost just want to take this turn to get as much pressure in as possible and go into my Zero Aura. He goes for Toxic, not the webs, which is interesting. Here I just want to go for Knock Off, which is kind of my safe move against anything. He's nothing that's really gonna love to take this Banded Knock Off. So he goes into Swamper. Swamper does should have the Rindo, which is interesting. But I know that Laddie always comes back in on that thing. I might as well just figure out what kind of Swamper that is. Hmm. Oh, no item, that's why. That's why that <laughs> calc looked funny. Okay, so he probably has uh, a little bit of defense bulk. Not fully, but there's some defense bulk and also HP bulk. So I'm just gonna go back in Eladio so he'll get his rocks up, that's fine. I think I might just want to take my opportunity here to go for Psychic. He goes for Ice Punch, so I'm just gonna roost up now. Eventually I will have to get rid of those. It's interesting to see he doesn't have Skarmory, so Blaziken probably won't have much of a chance to defog in this game, so there's going to be quite a bit of pressure on Latios, but as long as Swampert's there, I'm going to have switch-ins for Latios. Same with Volcanion. Well, not exactly the same with Metaqueen, I don't take his hits too well, but it does give me chances to get this in. He goes for Rocks again, I definitely wasn't going to defog there, so... I don't know what to say about that. Um, I have a physically defensive Latios to make sure I can take an acrobatics from Palucha. 
here, I'm just gonna go for Psychic again. He doesn't really have a safe switch in on it at all. If I can get rid of this thing, then he won't be able to get rocks up unless he's dual rocks with Nidoqueen, which I wouldn't imagine he would be. I think he'd probably be an AV Nidoqueen because last time I brought a specially attacking Zero Aura. So that's what I would suspect it would be. But if that's his only rock setter, that going down means that Greninja's Sash will stay intact. Which means that as long as I don't let it get its Sash broken, I will have a safe answer for Halucha in the back. And Halucha is just the biggest threat to my team. It's the biggest pain in my ass and prep there is. Now, Halucha is just a monster. You know, I love... I love the thing, but I hate facing it. Uh, unless you have something like uh, Zapdos or Mega Slowbro, and even on Zapdos, the thing can run Stone Edge. But unless you have something like that, it's so annoying to prep for. He's thinking about what he wants to do here. I would think he would just go into a rack on it, but I guess he's thinking about something else right now. Okay, we see Coco come out. I think first I want to just go into my Amoongus here. He goes right for the Dazzling Gleam. And I can just click Stun Spore here. He may reveal the Brave Bird here. Let me just get my Amoongus and calc his damage. Put Silo Simon here and then go to the top of Coco. I'm just going to go to the spec set and take off the specs. And we do get the... We get the pair off on Volcanion, which is nice. We had a lot of pressure to keep Amoongus healthy if he did bring his Linen, but he didn't, so I can play a little bit more aggressive with it. And also being able to keep... Greninja's Sash intact means I can play a bit more aggressive with Latios, too. So here I could either go into Umbreon or Latios. Umbreon could try to give me a wish pass, or I could just go into Latios and bank on being able to take anything. I got sidetracked, but yeah, he's probably a 252 special attack timid on his Coco. I'm just going to go back into my Latios here. Unfortunately, we get a para. I don't know if he's going to go for a move that was really going to hurt Latios, so... Um, I guess... He did go for Toxic, so... That was a little bit unfortunate. This thing is pretty annoying right now. I think I might just have to Psychic this thing. I think I need to get this thing weakened. As much as Latios' health is important to me, as long as I have Greninja's Sash intact, it's not really the end of the world if this thing gets weakened, and I do need to do something about that Volcanion. So I get the damage off on that Coco, and that is big boy damage. And I imagine he's just going to U-turn here. I think I just have to go out into my Amoongus regardless. That's what I will do. Twinkle Tackle, wow. So that turn goes very well for us. I think I want to predict his Volcanion coming in, because he definitely needs to save his Electric Terrain. So I'm going to predict his Volcanion coming in and go for the Bloom Doom. And I had Bloom Doom on this just to make sure I could prevent a Tyranitar from setting up too much, but it's going to double with helping me bot this Volcano. Oh my god, that did zero. It did zero, Amoongus. Amoongus? Amoongus won't be able to show his face in a crowd anymore. That did nothing. <laughs> okay, let's find out my damage. That has to be bulky. That has to be bulky. Better turn C bomb into a Z move. It has to have some bulk. 
it's probably something in the ballpark of 252 HP, so... Sing does actually have a very healthy defense stat. So he goes into a rock mid here, which is a good play for him. And I do not really have a safe switch in on this thing. I do not really want to let him get up webs, but not too much I can do about it at this point. I kind of want to save this thing to make Volcanion easier to deal with, but then I don't really have much to bring in on this thing, so I think I just have to click Psychic right now. Oh, and he goes for Leech Life, so... As long as he's not getting webs up right now, I guess. Which we may see him do here. Yeah, he does. Okay, so... This might be the only chance I'll have to get speed boost on Blaziken. This might be Blaziken's one opportunity to really do something here. If Flamethrower can knock this thing out. Or even high jump kick. Okay, so Flamethrower doesn't do it. High jump kick should do it. And I'm... I'm very likely to be faster than him. I'm gonna click high jump kick here, and I may even get the opportunity to defog with this thing. He goes knit a queen here, and this is, I think, where I just click defog. And he shows to be scarf, right? That had to have been scarf. I believe that had to have been Scarf. So I'm just gonna click a foul play here. I need to start whittling down that Vulcanian. I don't... I just have to keep whittling it. And hopefully he doesn't have rest, that would be such a pain in my butt right now. Unfortunately, we get a crit. I'm not sure how much that mattered. Oh, definitely annoying for the opponent, no doubt about that. Gives out a Coco here, and I just have to go into my Amoongus again. Allow the rinse repeat, I guess. Whenever this thing comes in, I just have to go Amoongus on it. Nita Queen is going to be our biggest obstacle because Greninja gets in and then it can beat Coco and it can beat Halucha. But I just got to deal with that Nita Queen. If he goes Halucha, I think I have to go hard Zero Aura just to make sure it can. Get sub and a sword stance. I think that's the safest thing I can do. And then a Greninja in the back should be able to revenge kill it. So we'll see what he wants to do here. Yep, he does go Halucha. And I'm just gonna go Zara Aura. He's gonna go for acrobatics. I just have to click Plasma Fist. He may very well go for Nidic Queen. I just have to click Plasma Fist. It's my one play here. I cannot mess around with this thing potentially getting up a free sub. I don't play that game ever. He's used up his seed now, so. I guess he probably wouldn't switch it. He probably just goes for the fighting move here, which. Yeah, probably high jump kick. And now I have to go into my Greninja. I'm gonna click my Ice Beam. Should be good to get the damage off on this thing. And ultimately, it's just gonna come down to dealing with that Nita Queen, which I'm not overly optimistic about at this point. 
think I have to, uh, have to get stun spore off on it. That's what I think I have to do. I have to get Greninja to KO this thing, and then I need to get a stun spore off on Nita Queen so that Greninja could potentially outspeed. So we go for acrobatics, and we're gonna hang on to our sash and knock it out. probably see the queen come out here, which I must suns for. So here I have to go into Umbreon, and then I can see about potentially wish passing into Amoongus or just sacking off the Umbreon. gonna do. and it is. I wish I would have brought Heal Bell on Umbreon now, but hindsight, you know, they say it's 2020. So he's gonna go for Sludge Wave now. Uh, unfortunately, I get the crit with the Foul Play. There's quite a bit more of that than I'd like in this game. Pokemon, right? It is really curious to me that he locked into Sludge Wave. I thought he would have definitely wanted to lock into the move that hit Amoongus the best. Yeah, I think my play here just to keep clicking Foul Play. And now I think actually I just have to attack this thing and because Stun Spore can miss, and I just need to as safely as possible put it in range of Shadow Sneak, or even just KO it. And we're gonna say GG to the opponent. And that was a that was a pretty damn good game, actually. I really did enjoy that. It was a really tough matchup. I had to get pretty creative here, and he got really creative himself. I mean, he definitely with that Volcan, and that just threw off our whole game there. So definitely kudos to the opponent. He's a real good player. Uh, I looked forward to this rematch because the last one just came down to the wire and it came down to some random number generator. So I did really enjoy this and my next battle I'll be going up against JRS in the finals. And for those of you who don't know, JRS looks like identical to Munching Orange. He doesn't have a YouTube channel, but I've seen him and he looks just like Munching Orange. So that, that's a little interesting tidbit about our next opponent. So, I want to thank 